let's see now how these three different distributions fit together and summarise the different conditions. Let's start off with the binomial distribution which has two parameters n and p. In one scenario we can approximate this with a plus one which we'll put down here and that scenario is n very large and p very small and we can then as always find the mean as np so we're coming down this corner and we take lambda equal to n times p and we get the Poisson which we sometimes write as Poisson with parameter lambda so that's that particular approximation lots of experiments each time the probability of a success is very small we take the total number of successes we expect and we use that in the Poisson distribution. Another scenario gets us to the normal distribution which has got parameters mu and sigma squared, the mean and the variance. And to find these, in this case, we want n large and p roughly a half, not too extreme one way or the other. We then find the mean of our normal, well as before, the mean of a binomial is NP and the variance sigma squared is NP times 1 minus P. We then take the square root of that when we need the standard deviation. So that will give us the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. And then the third side of the triangle is when we have a Poisson distribution if the mean of that is large then we can approximate the Poisson by the normal and we will find the mean by taking the same mean as the Poisson and the standard deviation is the square root of that mean because in fact for the Poisson the mean and the variance are the same. So if we have a large mean we can find the mean the standard deviation for the normal and that gives us the parameters we want and we can then do those calculations. And one of the great benefits of the normal distribution is that it includes lots of outcomes at once. As we've seen earlier we can do a whole lot of probabilities rather than individually using Poisson or binomial. The normal distribution just takes one single area and does it all in one go. So this is the layout for the three different probabilistic approximations that can be used and can uh, very much accelerate our calculations. OK, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? OK, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. OK, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, OK, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.